everything they don't tell you about motherhood. I even put on my little blouse for this one because this one's serious, guys. It's so serious. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Alia. Hi, why am I shy? and welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be filming wait happy mother's day first and foremost happy mother's day oh my gosh i feel like mother's day is one of my favorite mm. it's just i just love us all being celebrated you know so happy mother's day and welcome back to my channel today is a sit down video rather than a vlog because i needed to talk to you guys i needed to talk to my mothers my potential mothers my mothers to be you only talk to all of you yeah. today's video is going to be all everything they don't tell you about motherhood i even put on my little blouse for this one because this one's serious guys it's so serious so if you're new here hi i'm alia hi why am i shy I literally haven't filmed a sit-down video in so long, so I'm so shy, so bear with me. But hi, I'm Alia, my daughter is Isabel. Um, she's almost five years of age. She's five in a couple of months, she's five in October. Um, and guys, I cannot believe it. Like, I cannot believe I have looked after a child single-handedly. <laughs> um, for five years, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna go on to my notes. Right, <laughs> you know what I mean? Got my iPad, black women in tech, hashtag. Anyway, so my story about motherhood. So I had Isabel when I was 23 years of age. Was I 23? I got pregnant when I was 22, yeah. I had Isabel when I was 23 years of age and I didn't know what I was coming into. So for me, I got pregnant, very on in the pregnancy, it was evident that I was going to do this on my own, which was fine. My pregnancy, we'd done on my own. And then when Isabel was been, has been born, I've done it solely as a sole parent. But I have had a lot of help from my family. Um, when I say my family, I mean like my mom, Isabel's godparent, well, yeah, we, yeah Isabel's godmothers, um, my uncle and my auntie, like my close family, I've had a lot of help from them. Um, so it's not, even though I am a sole parent on paper, I literally can't say I'm a sole parent because literally my family would do more, like, the go above and beyond for Isabel. So yeah, um, so yeah, I had Isabel, I'm a sole parent, I parent Isabel on my own. And yeah, like, it's been such a journey. Like, I feel like I've learned so much. I've evolved during motherhood. And so I feel like you guys that have followed me for a while do know all of this. I had Isabel and then, I, when I, when I, initially when I had Isabel, I suffered with something called postpartum anxiety. And it took, I didn't get diagnosed for like a year. So I thought I just had really bad social anxiety and separation anxiety from Isabel. And I did have all of those. But also it was postpartum it was because of everything that had happened in my pregnancy and everything that had happened when Isabel was a newborn so that just made me like really anxious like I didn't want to go out like not funny uh, I didn't want to go out I didn't like I just wanted to be in the crib and if I wasn't with Isabel I genuinely felt physically sick like it was a lot and even to today it's still like I'm a lot better now and I feel like as time's gone on you've seen in my vlogs how I'm so much happier you've seen in my vlogs like I'm so active I'm so outside kind of um so yeah we've come such a long way um but yeah I really suffered with postpartum anxiety when I had Isabel and it was it was a tough time I would say I kind of come out of that when Isabel was like two coming on to three that, that's when I knew like I was really getting better and that's when now like when I have my time I don't think about I don't I think about of course I think about Isabel but I don't I don't feel guilty for having time to myself like I don't feel guilty for taking time for me so that we'll tie on to what i'm about to say next so the first thing we're going to talk about is five, all right so i'm going to say five things i've realized it'll probably go on more but these wow why did no one tell me about this mum guilt listen to me the guilt that i like my therapist was literally i was speaking to my therapist about this i was like i have so much guilt 
in regards to Isabel. Like, say if I say if my friends are going on holiday, they're like, Elia, let's go. Considering I take Isabel on holiday or to, like post COVID, like we've been on a few holidays. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not one of those mums, and I'm not shamming no one, but I'm not one of them mums that are always out the country and their kids in the country. Z goes out the country more than me. As you guys see my vlog, she's in, she goes to Kenya with my mum quite a, well, she's been twice, but she goes to Kenya with my mum. She, she'll go places with my mum and stuff. Um, so Z's out the country more than me at this point. But if my girls are like, my, like for instance, last year my girls went to Miami and I just couldn't justify going and leaving Z. Do you know what I mean? I could not do it. And then like my mum guilt like swallowed me at one point and even to the point like when I would go out, there was not a time that I would go into a shop and Isabel wouldn't get a gift. Like I would just really overcompensate her, think that's, so that's a little bit to do with like her dad, like just the whole situation with her dad. I feel like, this is what me and my therapist discovered the other day, like I, I overcompensate a lot because it's like I try to be the mum, well I am her mum and her dad, but it's like I try extra, extra, extra hard to do both. Um, so the mum guilt's like easy enough, like because at one point it was like I couldn't, I would feel bad to go to the gym because I wasn't with Isabel. I would feel bad to do like day to day normal things because I wasn't with my daughter. Do you know what I mean? I would think like I'm a deadbeat. <laughs> it's not funny, but I would think I'm a deadbeat because I'm not with her all the time. So mum guilt is such a big thing. And one thing I always felt very guilty of is bringing Isabel into the world knowing the situation with her dad. I carried that on my heart so much, especially as time went on and you know, we had to have that conversation about her dad. Do you know what I mean? Oh God, I, I felt so bad because it was just like, I can give you the world, but I can't force this man to act correct. I can't force this man to do the right thing initially, you know? So I did feel so guilty for that, but I've, I feel like I'm starting to have a lot, of, a lot more grace on myself. Um, Like I can't control, is it, is it God's control? Like I'm not God, I can't control, you know what I mean? And then, yeah, so yeah. Mum guilt is a big thing. The second thing I've realized is communication. Like Isabel is only four years old, but I still communicate with her effectively. I still make sure like, if she does something, I'm not just gonna be like, no Z, don't do that. Da, da, da. I'll be like, Isabel, come here and we'll talk about it. And I'll tell her why she shouldn't be doing that. I'll tell her how it affects other people when she does that. And I tell her like, you know, it's not, it's not the way. And then I will show her the correct way to do stuff. There's so many times and I've learned like not to communicate with her the way my mum used to communicate with me. So I think this is like very normal in black households. Like if you do something wrong, you're straight getting doofed or you're getting cussed straight away. Like I've had to really reel it back with Isabel. So when she does something wrong, I'm literally like, I have to count to 10. <laughs> like, so if it's like really, really bad, like the other day, guys, the other day, I, I went to Selfridges, I bought myself so much new makeup, because I was like, you deserve it, you deserve it. I bought myself so much new makeup, and then Isabel, like a few weeks late, a few weeks, days, whatever, later, Z, I'm in the living room just chilling. I think I was editing a vlog, and Z keeps running to the bedroom and the bathroom. So I'm like, what are you doing? She's got a beauty blender, she's wetting a beauty blender. I'm saying, Z, why are you wetting a beauty blender? She comes in, my, she comes in the living room, her face is full of my foundation full of it. I says, Z, what foundation did you use? She used my brand new 40 pounds foundation. And my thing with Z, she's at her age where she knows better. She knows she shouldn't be in my stuff. And if that was my mum, my mum would have flipped out. Like I would have got doofed up for that. But with Isabel, I, I literally, I laughed initially because I'm a non-serious candidate. I laughed and then I was like, Isabel, don't do that. Like you've got your own, Z's got her own play makeup. Like, you got your own makeup. You don't do that. Okay. That's mum's stuff. You know, you shouldn't be going in your mum's stuff. Why shouldn't you be going in your mum's stuff? So I feel like communication is key. Like, but I feel like communication with your kids is so key. You've got to sit down, you've got to break it down with them and you've got to communicate. After communication, what ties in with that is what I've learned is patience. As a mother, you're going to need the patience of a saint. You're go sometimes, guys, guys, I've been blessed. Like God showed out with Z, because God knew after the pregnancy I had and after everything I dealt with and uh, not after everything I dealt with and not losing my mind, my I add, 
There was no way he could have gave me a, a naughty child. There was no way. So I have actually been so blessed with Isabel. However, baby, she does try me. She does try me and she does, well, she's not even trying me. She tries to push the boundaries. Do you know what I mean? Let me change my vocab there. She tries to push the boundaries and I'm like, Isabel, like you see me in my vlogs, like last week she got home from nursery and she wanted to have an Easter egg for her snack. I says, put down the Easter egg. She starts opening it. I says, Isabel, Isabel, who's that? I said, Isabel, don't open it because you're not having it. Put down the Easter egg. Oh, I'm thinking about me, I'm gonna speak that word. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm in Jamaica. Anyway, so I'm like, put down the Easter egg. Do you know what I mean? And you've just got to have patience with them. And it's like, from zero to five, their brain is forming into the type of human they're gonna be. If you're going on a reckless with them, they're gonna be a reckless person. You've got to be like patient with them. And in with that ties with boundaries. One thing I am heavy on is boundaries. If Isabel does not wanna hug that family member, she's not hugging them. If Isabel doesn't wanna chat to that family member, she's not chatting to them. If Isabel does not want to, like there's there's a fine line between being rude and respecting their boundaries like my i have a very big family but i've got about so my mom has got nine sisters and two brothers and out of all my mom's siblings is about probably not she knows of them all but they all live all over the place like they all live in like india and dubai and you know they live all over the place so when we have family link-ups, say a cousin comes from France and wants to pick up Isabel, and Isabel don't want to be picked up, put down the picnic because she don't want to be picked up. I have so, like, there's so many times where there's people that see Isabel twice a year and they're like, oh, Isabel, Isabel, and she's like, nah, nah. And my mum's like, Leah, tell her to stop being rude. I'm like, she's not being rude, she don't know them, like, she don't know them, no. Leave her alone, hello, leave that. So I'm very heavy on Z's boundaries. If Z don't want to do something, she don't have to do it. If Z don't, within reason though, do you know what I mean? Like within reason, like within people, like if she don't want to hug up someone, sometimes my brother comes and he's like, Zamunda, Zamunda. And he's trying to pick her up and hold her and she don't want to be held. So she'll be like, no, and she'll run off. She loves my brother to pieces, but in that moment, she don't want to be held. So I leave her. Sometimes my own dad, my own dad, would try and pick up Z and she don't wanna, she just don't want to right now, so just leave her, you know what I mean? So I'm very, very strong on her boundaries. I've put here, your time. Your time, oh! They didn't tell me about this one. No one told me about this one. Look. Right, even though Z goes to nursery, Z goes to nursery Tuesday to Friday, eight till six. The only way I should not go to nursery is Monday, and then I have her on the weekend, or she'll go to her cousin's house or whatever. But guys, I still don't have time to do nothing. I still don't have time to do nothing, because if I'm not in work, I'm in uni. You know, like, little things like the gym. Like, this year, I wanted the bunda. I wanted a bunda, but because I've got, I'm in work, I'm, I've got to go to uni, because of those things, if I, if I then, <laughs> I'm crying. If I then, like, before I had Z, for instance, I could do everything I need to do in the day and go to gym in the evening. In the evening, I'm very much in my yard with my picnic. Do you know what I mean? I used to get up at 5.30 a.m. and go to the gym. And I get to I'm all going to the picnic. I can't do it no more because I've, I've got Z. Do you know what I mean? So your time. Z said I'm a tech that. And, you know, by the grace of God, I've got, you know, I've got support, I've got shape, but yo, your time is very, like as a mother, you need to be so organized or everything would just be so overwhelming, so overstimulating, so over everything. <laughs> and then learning your child. Obviously, every child is different. Every child is different. And I've seen that firsthand because I love, like, I've got so many mum friends. Hey, how are ya? I've got so many, all our kids are so different. So you gotta learn your child. You gotta learn their communication styles. You gotta learn how they respond and how they don't respond. 
Z, see if she does something and I shout, she would just shut down. She literally, she's not here for my shouting. Do you know what I mean? But see if Z does something and I chat to her, she'll chat to me back. Do you know what I mean? Z is a very, wow. Well, <laughs> if it is so to myself. Z is a very good communicator and it's because of all of these things. Do you know what I mean? One last thing. If you're a mother, if you're a mother to be, if you're, you know, I don't know. So now, for every single mother out there, whether you're a single mother, whether you're a married mother, a co-parenting mother, a lesbian mother, a gay mother, whether there's two moms, whether there's nine dads, nine moms, shall I say. Like, I just want you to know, I just want you to know, it is going to be fine. There were so many people, especially because of my situation with my baby dad, there were so many people when I was pregnant that was going, it's going to be a horror story. It's going to be this, it's going to be that. It's, you're going to have postpartum depression. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. Bro, I was fine. I literally have the best daughter. Like, I can't thank God enough for my, for my child. And I'm not just saying that. Like, Z is genuinely everything I ever needed. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is going to be fine. It may be a bit rocky some days. There may be some days you're like, what is going on? There may be some days you look back at your old videos and you're like, ah, I miss that. But the best is yet to come. So hold on to you babies today. Tell them you love them. Enjoy them. Spoil them. Don't let no one, especially not the internet, tell you what you should and shouldn't buy for your kids. Also, don't. Um, spoil them, enjoy them, love on them because we're raising the next generation. Do you know what I mean? We genuinely are raising the next generation and I'm so excited. Like, I have a five-year-old. In another five years, she's going to be 10. In another five years, I'm like, no! But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. I will see you in a weekly vlog next week. I love you.